So we have our DNA in our nucleus, right? And we right. have partial reprogramming that we can do to recover that to some degree. Right, right. But right. if you do that in an old cell and you've got old mitochondria, then that's not that's still not going to solve the problem. You, so have you thought about the combination? Oh, yeah. No, but that's, in fact, that's our, if, if you look at our, our kind of standard deck, which you can, you know, we have YouTube, there's, a, we, we have our presentations are on YouTube. One of the things we always talk about is what we call the laptop analogy. You mm -hmm. can tell I'm an old computer programmer because uh, I was talking about laptops and hard disks. Laptop refurbishment analogy. And, you know, whenever you take an old laptop and, you know, you send it off to some factory and they refurbish it and they resell it, that's a, that's a thing that people do. Whenever you get an old laptop, the first thing they do is they put in a new battery and a new power supply. They don't even mess around. They don't test it. They just put in a new battery. And the reason is that you need the power to do anything else that you want to do. If you don't have good power, you can't rewrite the operating system that you need to you need to rewrite, okay? And so <clears throat> we think that mitochondrial transplantation and epigenetic reprogramming absolutely should go together because you need the mitochondrial DNA fixed and then you need the nuclear epigenetic DNA fixed, okay? And they're working together. Remember the nucleus and the nuclear nuclear DNA and the mitochondrial DNA, they're in constant, they're literally co-computing. And that's been a lot of research about that. The mitochondria actually serves as a sub-processor for the, for the nucleus. And uh, there's hundreds of them and they're scattered all over the cell. So you can imagine, you know, there's, there's, the nucleus is using the mitochondria almost like sub sub you know, subsidiaries, uh, they're out there. And they also, we think there might be a lot of s sensory input that the mitochondria are collecting and sending back to the nuclear DNA. So if they're not, if you don't fix both of them, you're never going to get the really high quality restoration. So that's my argument. I think I, if, if I personally, if it was up to me, I'd, I'd do both for sure for me, for me personally. Yes. Yeah, I'm just wondering because so far, uh, in vivo reprogramming has not been that successful. They've had some success, but not that much. It's hard. It's very hard. Um, sure. I, I, I absolutely hope and pray that they succeed. I think it will take years and there's a lot of money going into it. I, that's why we, we think that mitochondrial, I always say mitochondrial, uh, regen, you know, rep, Restoration is maybe 50% of the problem, but it's really the first and kind of it's kind of the low hanging fruit. Like we could do it right now. Right. Hopefully that's everything we've seen so far makes it appear that it is fairly simple and straightforward to do. It's hard to grow the mitochondria, but transferring them in is easy. It's not easy, but it's, it's, uh, you know, it's doable. And so I would say that's the thing I could do in the next few years and maybe I only get people another 10 years of life. Well, that's okay, because then that gives them time to wait for the people to finish the epigenetic reprogramming work and get that working properly, right? So, yes, I saw that. It's, so I had, so what one thought is it would be nice if the people who are doing the epi, epigenetic reprogramming in mice could also do mitochondrial transplant, transplantation at the same time. But the the thing about extending people's lifespan, yeah, it, that kind of plays into the longevity escape velocity idea. Right. Exactly, and and my argument is mitochondria are, are the first the first thing to do, right? Because you, you like you boost their energy levels. Also, if you've got someone who's eighty years old, and they're already their their cells are already chronically energy depleted. All this other stuff is just going to be hard to do because everything takes takes energy, right? Even epigenetic programming, it takes energy. The cell has to grab the the vector and it has to go over there and it has to translate it, and blah blah blah. And, and it's just going to be so much easier if we can re-energize people first. Yes, That's philosophy.